Hi guys, welcome to the lecture series on the quantum model of the atom. In this lecture series, we're going to be exploring in great detail what atoms actually look like. Now, this is of course a question that we've spent a fair amount of time with already in the course. And, you know, thus far we've come up with hopefully a working model uh, of the atom that looks something like this, where we have a localized region uh, called the nucleus, which is comprised of two different types of particles, protons and neutrons. And outside of this dense nuclear region, we have another type of particle flying around, which we call electrons. Okay, so we've got an electron out here. And we know some characteristics. We know like electrons are light, uh, about you know one two thousandths of the mass of a proton or a neutron. We also know that the electrons have a negative charge, whereas protons have a positive. Neutrons have you know of course a neutral charge. And it, it really, we've sort of introduced some concepts in terms of how we count, how we symbolize these different atoms. Um, but what we haven't really addressed is really that core question of what the atom truly looks like. And again, that's going to be our goal. And in order to achieve that goal, we're going to need to use a branch of physics called quantum mechanics. So quantum mechanics is going to be, again, the physical theory that's going to provide the basic answer to what atoms actually look like. Now, if you recall, when we talked about this before, we had this idea of these basic components of atomic structure, but a number of questions popped up. Um, for example, if we've got negatively charged electrons out here and a positively charged nucleus, one of the glaring questions that we see with this basic electronic model is, you know, why is it that those electrons don't simply spiral out into the nucleus and collapse? Now we of course know that this doesn't happen, but the explanation for why these electrons don't spiral into the nucleus is something that we actually can't address using so-called classical physics. We can't use you know, Newton's ideas in order to really solve this problem. We need a fundamentally new type of physics. And this new type of physics, quantum mechanics, is an extremely powerful theory. In the words of one of the founding fathers of quantum theory, Paul Dirac, uh, he says that the underlying physical laws necessary for the mathematical theory of a large part of physics and the whole of chemistry are completely known. Okay, So we have a theory, quantum mechanics, that's going to give us uh, a very good explanation as to why these electrons don't spiral into nucleus and more generally what this atom truly looks like. So that's the good news. Now, the bad news is, uh, you know, in the words of another one of the founding fathers of, who's been instrumental in you know, elucidating a lot of the key attributes of quantum theory um, and extending uh, you know, the breadth of quantum theory, Richard Feynman, Nobel laureate from last century, um, he's very famous for saying that, in fact, nobody truly understands quantum theory. And so when we're going through the development of the atomic model and we're exploring quantum theory and these quantum mechanical principles, what we're going to find is some results that are very alarming and perhaps quite disturbing at some level. And in fact, Einstein himself said that you know, the more success that quantum theory has in terms of being able to predict different sorts of phenomena, the sillier it looks. So what we're going to see as we're exploring this is a bunch of very counterintuitive, strange results. And so if, you're, if it seems a little abstract, seems a little strange, you're not alone. Right? The, the greatest physicists of the last you know, 100 years um, all unanimously agree that quantum mechanics is a very strange theory. But despite its strangeness, it's extremely powerful. So, of course, you know, our main focus here um, in terms of the application of quantum theory is we want to be able to talk about atoms and molecules. Okay? And that's going to be the, the major uh, you know, focus uh, from here on out. But just to keep in mind, the success of quantum theory goes much beyond chemistry to the very design um, you know, and, and development and implementation of computer processors. It allows us to design new materials. Uh, it allows us to basically understand biology at a better level. Quantum theory is truly everywhere around us right now. 
But despite the success of quantum theory, it's important to keep in mind that just like, you know, Newton's laws and classical physics, you know, failed to answer certain fundamental questions and therefore ne necessitated the development of a new type of physics, namely quantum theory, quantum theory itself is not going to be the final solution to everything. And so Einstein said himself that, you know, it's a very impressive theory. It's very powerful. It can solve a lot of problems for us. But Einstein had this sort of inner voice, he says, that tells him that it's not yet the real thing. Okay? And we're going to come back to this quote when we start to explore some of the nuances of quantum theory later on. But it's important to keep this in mind from the standpoint of the broader development of scientific theories. Right? Scientific theories are inherently progressive. We never have an end-all, be-all theory of everything. Right? We are moving incrementally to a more refined, more accurate view of how the universe works. And so what we're going to be looking at in the remainder of this lecture series is you know, how quantum theory allows us to understand atomic and molecular structure. So we're going to start off by introducing some fundamental concepts that you may not be familiar with before. So we're going to actually start off talking about light and light waves. And then we're going to talk about what quantum mechanics has to say about light. And this is going to lead us to uh, you know, basically a quantitative exploration using some uh, experiments. And then we're going to build into the really looking at the heart and soul of what we're going to be talking about in the course, which is electronic structure. So we're going to start looking at the quantum mechanical properties of electrons and then atoms and molecules. We're going to be motivating the quantum theory by looking at emission spectra and the Bohr model. Then the last part, uh, right, really these sections 6 through 10, will be quantum theory proper um, applied specifically to individual atoms or molecules. And then we'll round out our mini-series with a discussion of some periodic trends and periodic properties, essentially going back to that periodic table once again and um, you know, basically looking at how quantum theory has actually been used and you know, is intimately tied to the actual structure of the periodic table itself. And as a result, some really nice trends fall out. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the first video, which is going to be an introduction to light and waves.